The sediment filter is the cheapest filter, and it might seem like it's just capturing dirt, rust, and larger particles. However, the best practice solutions are about maintaining pressure and membrane performance. That's why we don't suggest changing it just based on time, but rather when the pressure gauge tells you that it's clogged and pressure going into that membrane is reduced. The primary purpose of the sediment filter is just to protect the more expensive carbon block from getting clogged and membrane from being fouled. This is a case where the quality or type of sediment filter is not likely to have a direct impact on the quality of water. The TDS or dissolved solids will likely be close to the same before and after the sediment filter. However, indirectly, the sediment filter can be the lowest cost method of dramatically improving TDS performance on the entire system. This gets to identifying the right sediment filter configuration and when it's time to replace the filter. We're going back to the pressure again because once the sediment filter gets clogged with dirt, rust, and sediment, it reduces the pressure to all the other filters after it, including the membrane, which requires that pressure to operate efficiently. That means if we had 50 PSI at the house, but the dirty or clogged sediment filter dropped the PSI to 30, we would lose half of our flow performance or double or more the TDS getting through. We don't need to change all the filters to get back to ideal performance, just that few dollar sediment filter. Getting the rejection back up will cut the DI resin consumption by half or more and will immediately pay for itself, often multiple times over. Many people burning through expensive resin may find it to be dramatically cheaper just to maintain the sediment filters instead of constantly replacing resin. Couple ways to know when to change your sediment filter. Sediment filters will often get visually dirty. That can be a sign that they're depleted, but just as often they'll last a lot longer than that. It captures dirt, so it'll often look dirty on the outside. However, a good depth filter will capture sediment of various particle sizes throughout its entire thickness, so visual assessment is just really not the best way to judge the state of the filter. However, if the carbon blocks, which are after the sediment filter, are getting visually dirty, that's just not a good sign, and the sediment filter is likely depleted, or even means that it's gone beyond exhaustion point and needs to be changed prior to that. Visually dirty carbon blocks might also suggest that the sediment in your water is fine and getting through your filter, so using a smaller micron sediment filter might be wise. In very rare cases where reefers have ongoing problems with sediment, running two sediment filters in series, one larger micron first and a second smaller micron next, will greatly extend the time between filter changes and maintenance. It's likely less than 1% of reefers would require that. You'll know if you're one of them if the carbon blocks are getting clogged prematurely, which is not cheap. The best way to monitor and replace sediment filters is a pressure gauge. If your system doesn't already have one, clip in a pressure gauge right before the membrane. Note the pressure after a filter swap. Hopefully it's close to or over 50 psi, and when the pressure drops enough to affect rejection rates or flow rates, which can be as little as 5 psi, swap out the sediment filter. Pressure gauge can be less than 15 bucks and an easy fix. For the most complete picture, you could also put a gauge on the input line of the system to compare your home's pressure against the membrane pressure in real time. Note the filters themselves, even brand new ones, will drop the PSI a bit. This is somewhat rare, but if you find that your sediment filter is clogging too fast, you have to change them constantly. You have two options. First, you could try a larger micron size, like going from one micron to five. Good news is the five is less expensive as well. Most reefers don't need them as small as one micron. As long as your carbon blocks don't get dirty or get clogged, stick with that five micron, which should last longer. Alternatively, you can use a better sediment filter. Every sediment filter these days calls itself a depth sediment filter, meaning that it's looser micron on the outside and gets tighter towards the center. However, they don't all perform that task the same. Some do it in two or three steps or a small range. We use rosave.z filters here because they have a true graded density. You can feel the very density in your hand because the outside is softer and center is denser. It will last substantially longer. We cut this one in half so you can see how it collects various degrees of dirt and sediment throughout the entire thickness of the filter. While rosave.z's do cost a few bucks more, they can often last more than twice as long, making it both most cost effective and less work.